Syracuse is number one in the nation for the highest concentration of poverty amongst African Americans and Latinos. And so if you look at it, Syracuse is kind of a microcosm of the rest of the world. And if we can affect change here and deal with these very major issues and move the levers here, then we can replicate that and take it somewhere else and do the same there. I, I grew up in the Bronx, uh, South Bronx and um, North Bronx, Edenwall Projects uh, between two households. Edenwall Projects was, was one of the worst projects in the Bronx. Grew up in the crack era when, you know, two sides of the street, north and south, were warring. Education allowed me to go to Horace Mann, which then allowed me to go to Hobart and William Smith Colleges, which is what brought me up to upstate New York. And I started doing an independent study in uh, film and music and really focusing on the culture that defined me, which is hip hop. When you grow up in the Bronx and you're surrounded by, you know, drugs, you're either doing it or you're selling it, right? Or you're finding something else that is gonna take up your time, take up your interests, you know, and get you refocused. And so hip hop was that for me. So I started out as an MC, I started rapping. It opened a door for me to walk into schools and talk to kids in a different way where they looked up to me. They weren't listening to me like a teacher or a parent. They were listening to me as someone that identified with them and their culture. The impetus for me creating Good Life was, was that so no other uh, black or brown kid had to experience what I experienced or um, had to continue living in conditions like I, I lived in. The average person that thinks of hip hop thinks of the music that's raunchy, that, that has a lot of negative connotations that they hear on the radio. And what they don't realize is that it was actually a culture that was born out of the South Bronx during a time where there were no jobs, a lot of poverty and a lot of violence, a lot of gang issues. And so hip hop was really like a social response. It was a, it was a reaction to what was going on at the time that was inherently in its, in its values, it was anti-drug, it was anti-violent, anti-gang, it was pro-literate, pro-education. And so those are all the, the, the core values that are inherent in hip hop as a culture. You know, the, the two biggest things that kids in Syracuse lack is identity and purpose. And so these kids have no identity, they don't understand who they are, they don't understand where they come from, and they have no purpose because they're disconnected from opportunity, disconnected from access, disconnected from any possibility of being successful, and then we're telling them that they need to go out into the streets and be successful somehow. So for us, the other thing that replaces um, purpose is entrepreneurship. You have hip hop for identity and entrepreneurship for purpose. Taking their inner talent, their inner most loved, uh, extracurricular activities and turning that into a money-making opportunity. So in the beginning of 2015, the county identified specific zip codes in the area that, that were highest in poverty and also the highest in youth uh, recidivism rates. Recidivism is the recurring arrest uh, uh, going in and out of prison. Um, and so if a kid is arrested and, and in placement and comes home and then gets rearrested, we consider that recidivism. We currently have a program where we go in and we teach kids how to DJ. We teach them the business behind DJing. That's an example of how we can teach them entrepreneurship and hip hop culture at the same time, how they can break the cycle of poverty and incarceration at the same time. So we're talking to them in a language that they know. We're talking to them and meeting them where they're at and we're teaching them, you already possess every skill you need to be successful and here's how you use it in these types of environments. The four pillars that we focus on are life skills, uh, financial literacy and uh, assets, um, entrepreneurship and also health. And so we do a number of different um, workshops to help kids develop skills in those areas. Right now we have three social uh, enterprises that um, help train youth and also employ them. Uh, GLM Printing, the full service uh, promotional print company. We also have a vending machine company called Good Eats. We have three vending machines where we teach kids how to do inventory and stocking and all of that. And then we have uh, Good Lawns. And so we took some kids, borrowed a lawnmower and went out for a day. We reached out to the community and we thought that maybe a few people would, would actually respond and, and get their lawns mowed. We had a flood of people and the community really responded in strength and it lasted not just one day, but the entire summer. Five to 10 years from now, we see Good Life 
um, having a firm root in the Syracuse community, um, having the building established, and uh, having high numbers of youth uh, being produced as entrepreneurs, as successful stories, uh, and examples of what happens when we pour into the kids. 215 Tully, the Hip Hop Center for Youth Entrepreneurship, is not just a building for us to engage youth. It's deeper than that. This building is about identity. Imagine kids walking into a building that speaks to them, that has their culture, that they feel ownership of, and then it's also opportunity. It's those two things, it's identity and purpose together. Our successes don't look like other successes, but we're a program that's working with a population that other programs can't work with, other agencies can't work with, right? Or they may not know how. Until we have 100% of kids not going to prison, 100% of kids doing well in school, 100% of kids not in poverty, I can't feel any gratification, right? And that's why we're in the work that we do and that's why we do what we do.